Welcome to part 6 of our series. Get started with ML Agents in Unity. In this final part, we'll show you how to use your trained model inside Unity, how to visualize your training stats using TensorBoard, and how to customize your training process using a config file. In the last episode, we added manual controls, a simple stats display, and visual feedback for training outcomes. Most importantly, we sped up training dramatically by running multiple environments in parallel. If you haven't completed parts 1 through 5 yet, I recommend doing that first, as this tutorial picks up right where the last episode left off. You'll find the tutorial series playlist linked in the description below. OK, let's get straight into the tutorial. At the end of the last episode, we had just completed a full training run using parallel environments. We are going to pick up right from there. If you still have your Anaconda PowerShell prompt open after finishing training, it should look something like this. If you've closed the terminal since then, no worries, your training results have been safely saved in the results folder at the root of your Unity project. Let's take a moment to look at the training output in the terminal. As you can see every 50,000 steps, ML Agents prints a summary of how training is progressing. Each line begins with the behavior name, in our case, Turtle. This is followed by the current training step, how long training has been running, and two important metrics, mean reward and standard deviation of reward. Mean reward gives us an average of how well the agent is performing over recent episodes. A low or negative value means the agent is struggling. Higher values, especially positive ones, suggest the agent is learning to reach the goal more consistently. In the early steps, the mean reward is quite low, around negative 1.5. That makes sense since the turtle is still exploring and bumping into walls a lot, but as training progresses, we see that reward gradually increase. By step 400,000 we're seeing positive rewards, and by 500,000 the agent is earning an average reward of 0.37, which means it's regularly reaching the goal and avoiding mistakes. Standard deviation of reward tells us how consistent that performance is. A high number means the agent's results vary a lot from episode to episode. Lower values indicate more stable behavior. So ideally, as training continues, you want the mean reward to go up and the standard deviation to go down. Anyway, take a look just below the training stats. You'll notice that once training completes, ML Agents exports a trained model as an Onyx file. This file is the key to running your agent inside Unity without the Python backend. Let's go ahead and import that model into our Unity project so we can see the Turtle Agent in action, using everything it has learned. Switch back to our Turtle Agent project in the Unity editor. Let's first create a new folder to drop the Onyx file into. I'm going to call this folder AI Models. Now let's go and find that Turtle Onyx file. It should be inside the Results folder in your project root, under the subfolder named after your training run. In my case, that's many turtles but yours might be different depending on the run ID you used. In any case, open that subfolder. Once you've found the turtle onyx file, just drag it into the AI models folder we created in Unity. Unity will automatically import the file and you'll see it appear as a new asset in your project. Now that we've imported the turtle onyx file, the next step is to assign it to our agent. In the project tab, open the prefabs folder and double-click the environment prefab to open it in prefab mode. Now, in the hierarchy, select the turtle game object. Scroll down to the behavior parameters component in the inspector. Find the model field. Drag the turtle onyx file from the AI models folder into this field. Then, change the behavior type from default to inference only. This tells Unity to use the trained model to drive the agent's behavior instead of relying on the Python backend. Once that's done, click the back arrow at the top left of the hierarchy panel to exit prefab mode and return to the main scene. Now, let's test the agent using the trained model. First, quickly check that our turtle agents are set to inference only. Then, press the play button. The turtle agent should now be running entirely on its own. No Python backend required, using everything it has learned during training. OK, hit the stop button to exit play mode. Now that we've tested our agent, 
let's take a quick look at how it actually performed during training. ML Agents automatically logs detailed training stats in the background, and we can view those using a tool called TensorBoard. To launch TensorBoard, we need to switch back to our Anaconda PowerShell prompt. Now run the following TensorBoard command. This command tells TensorBoard to read the training logs from the results folder, the same folder where your Onyx model was saved. Once it starts, TensorBoard will show you a local web address, usually something like localhost port 6006. Just copy that link from the terminal and paste it into your browser. You should now see a dashboard showing reward graphs, episode length, and other useful metrics from your training run. The most recent training run, in my case, many turtles, is shown in light blue here. You can clearly see that the cumulative reward is rising steadily over time, which is exactly what we want. Also note that the episode length is getting shorter. That's a good sign. It means the agent is reaching its goal more quickly. I won't go into any more detail on TensorBoard metrics here. That's probably a topic worthy of its own video. That said, I have a hunch that our turtle agent would benefit from a longer training run. To increase the number of training steps, we'll need to set up a custom config file, and I'll show you how to do that now. To get started, let's download a custom config file to use for training our turtle agent. I've prepared a ready-to-use file called turtle.yaml and I've uploaded it to the ML Agents Course Assets GitHub repository that accompanies this course. You'll find a link to it in the video description below. Open a browser and head to the ML Agents Course Assets repo. Click on the turtle.yaml file to open it. You'll see that it's a text file containing a number of training parameters. We won't be covering those right now, however. For now, just click this download button to save the file to your computer. Now, head over to the root folder of your Unity project. Here, create a new folder and name it config. Next, move the turtle.yaml file that you have just downloaded into this config folder. Now let's open this turtle.yaml in a text editor. You can use any editor you like. I have a feeling our turtle agent could benefit from a longer training run, and we can achieve that by increasing the number of training steps. If you look through the list of parameters, you'll find one called Max Steps, which is currently set to 500,000. Let's go ahead and bump that up to 1 million. We'll leave the rest of the parameters as they are. Most of them are, after all, set to sensible default values for our agent's behavior. Anyway, let's save the file and exit the text editor and let's switch back to Unity. We need to make all our turtle agents trainable again by turning off inference mode in their behavior parameters. Reopen the environment prefab and in the hierarchy view, select the turtle game object. In the inspector, under behavior parameters, find the model field, delete the turtle model asset from this field. Then just below that, switch the behavior type from inference only back to default. This will allow the ML Agents Python backend to once again train the agents. OK. Now click the back arrow at the top left of the hierarchy panel to exit prefab mode. You should be back in the main scene hierarchy view. Be sure to save your scene. Let's now switch back to the Anaconda PowerShell prompt. If you haven't already done so, press Ctrl-C to quit TensorBoard. Next, to clear away the previous text output, simply enter clear. Now, let's launch a new training session using the turtle.yaml config file that we just edited. Type the following command into the terminal, and feel free to use a different run ID if you prefer. This part of the command tells ML agents where to find our YAML file relative to the directory that we are currently in. And just a reminder, I've put together a list of all the conda commands used in this project, and there's a link to that in the description. Anyway, once you see the Unity logo and the message prompting you to press play, switch back to the Unity editor and hit the play button to begin training. You should now see all of your turtle agents come to life in their environments just like before. This time, however, the Python trainer is using the training parameters defined in the YAML file that we specified. That means this training session will run for one million steps before completing. Wait for the training session to complete once it does, 
take a look at the ML agents log in the PowerShell terminal. Looking at the stats, it seems like this training run yielded significantly better results than the last one. The mean reward is over 0.96, and the standard deviation is only 0.018. Now that improvement likely isn't just because we increased max steps. The batch size in our config file was also set to 512, which is actually smaller than the default of 1024 when no config file is used. This allowed for more frequent policy updates during training, which may have helped the turtle agent learn more efficiently. Anyway, I plan to cover these parameters and how they affect training in a future video. And that brings us to the end of the Get Started with ML Agents series. While this marks the final part of the series, it's definitely not the end. I'll be creating more ML agents and reinforcement learning videos, each one diving deeper into specific features or concepts. If there's a topic you'd like to see covered, feel free to drop a comment. I'm always open to suggestions. As always, if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.